right, welcome to Porch Chats. I'm Colleen Condon and I'm chair of the Charleston County Democratic Party. And here we're today with Spencer Wetmore. How are you, Spencer? We're great. How are you, Colleen? Wonderful. Well, who do you have with you? Great. Well, we brought the family. They just wanted to say hello. This is Lola Kate. Lola Kate, can you say hello? <laughs> and this is Brooks. Hi. And of course, this is my husband, Burns. <laughs> hey, Burns. Brooks, I love your blue hair. Lola Kate, do you have blue hair too? <gasps> Look at there. That's pretty cool. Talk about super Democrats. I'm really impressed. Absolutely. Well, hey, do y'all want to go inside with daddy real quick? Yeah. All yeah. right. Good luck to you, Bye. Thanks, bye y'all. Bye. Yeah. How are you? Great. Doing all right. It's warmed up a little bit. It was cold this morning. I know. I know. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I know. So Spencer, you're running for state house, is that correct? It is. I'm running for state house 115, and that's a district that covers, it's a district of islands, so it covers Folly Beach, Kiowa, and Seabrook, and then it's James Island from Folly Road East all the way to the Charleston Harbor. So like a lot of districts in Charleston, it's gerrymandered, and it's not exactly what you would think, but that is the district. So we're, we're fortunate to be along the water and have a whole district full of islands. <laughs> oh, terrific. Well, great. Well, what made you decide to run for the state house? Well, you know, I have been a public servant for, gosh, 10 years now. Um, I worked at the Charleston County Solicitor's Office for almost four years, um, and I've been the city administrator out at Folly Beach for nearly six years now. And I just truly believe that having good people in government can make a difference. So I'm running to hopefully make a difference. Um, you know, it's funny, my, my youngest, Lola Kate, who you all saw, <laughs> um, she asked me one time, Mommy, what do you do at work all day? I said, well, honey, I get to help people. And so I, I feel like I sort of owe it to her and to the kids and to this community, um, do everything in my power to make a difference. So that's why I'm, I'm running. Oh, that is terrific. Well, tell us, what, what things can we expect from you if you get elected to the state house? Well, so what are your I, top issues? Yeah, so, you know, it's funny because coming into this campaign, I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on what the issues were, right? So, so this district, uh, the environment is, is very important. I've, you know, we've been reaching out to voters and we've been, can't knock on doors, but we've been doing phone calls. And um, it's very clear the environment's a very important issue to everybody in this district. Um, you know, we also, we, we, I believe it's important to fight for our public servants, you know, fight for our teachers, our first responders. Um, you know, these are the people that, keep our community safe and that make it a, a great place to live and be. Um, and I also believe that we've got to fund the infrastructure. We've just, we've got to be serious about roads, flooding. I mean, my husband works downtown and it takes him a solid 45 minutes to get to work from Folly. And honestly, that's just too long. We're, it's, it's less than 10 miles. <laughs> and right. so we've, we've got to be funding infrastructure. That means flooding, that means roads. And it's, you know, that also means mass transit and a lot of other uh, improvements that we need to be making to make this a livable community. Um, you know, I think now that we're seeing the coronavirus and everything, um, I think that's going to change the priorities for, for me and for a lot of people. Um, you know, I think when we come out of this, we're going to have a lot of people who've lost their jobs, which probably means they've lost their health care. Um, you know, unfortunately, we, these small businesses that have supported our school fundraisers and our community for all this time, it's going to be our turn to support them. So I think we're going to have a slight shift in the issues as a result of all this. We've got to get serious about health care for everyone. We've got to get serious about taking care of local and small businesses. And so I hope that that will also be, you know, I'm sure there'll be an opportunity to work on those issues as well. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Now there's, there's so much that uh, is special about Folly Beach and James Island. I grew up on James Island as well. And so, uh, you know, we're losing a little bit of it, maybe even more than a little bit of it with all the commercial development and the changes right. to the environment. So it's great to see you putting that priority in place. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and in fact, if I could sort of speak on that with Polly a little bit, yeah. um, you know, we, we have a, a unique sort of situation out here and part of my role at Folly has been that I've been really involved in the land use planning. Um, in fact, my mom was a, was a planner for Charleston County 30 years ago, and she's been a land use attorney my whole life. So this is something that's sort of in the blood for me. Uh, for those who don't know, I'll, I'm going to point out, for those who don't know, Melinda Luca is her mama. <laughs> Thank you. She will appreciate that. <laughs> um, Great so she, Democrat. Oh, she, yes, lifelong for sure. Um, but so, you know, the land use planning is really important when it comes to the overdevelopment. And at Folly, I'm really proud of some of the things that we've done. Um, you know, we were one of the first communities to put in place 
um, a rule that hot new hotels couldn't be more than 10 rooms. Um, we just passed a formula business act. And so what that means is that um, we're protecting the character of the community by prohibiting chain businesses from coming into our downtown commercial district. Um, oh, wow. We worked with Low Country Local First on this. I was really, really proud of it. Um, you know, we also put in place the, the strictest beach setback in the whole state. Um, we have a 40 foot buffer on the beach and that was something that I was really instrumental in working on. Um, and I'm really, really proud of it. So I think it's important to understand that I'm gonna be a, a candidate who who stands up against risky development and is not afraid to say, hey, no, we've got to put the character of this community first. Oh, that is terrific. That is really intriguing. I'm going to have to look into that because um, it's interesting to think how you did it. So you did it based on where they're registered? No, couldn't be that uh, so, simple. Yeah, it's a zoning ordinance, actually. So we had... Um, right we actually had to put in place a certain definition of a formula business. So we chose to define it as a business that has 10 or more outlets, standardized logo, uniforms, you know, store okay. design. Um, and so our focus, of course, you know, as a city, we can't decide, you know, local right. or non-local businesses, but we can protect the character of the community. And so that was our goal. You know, certainly if a Starbucks wanted to come, they would have to be, they would have to be Folly Coffee, right? They couldn't be Starbucks. And, and that was important to us. Um, and so, you know, it's finding creative ways like that and working with your community partners to protect what's important to you. So that's something that um, was a really cool opportunity at Folly. You know, everybody knows Folly is a pretty right. fun place to be. And that was important to us to keep it that way. Exactly. That's really neat. Um, having, you know, worked on zoning, certainly with the county, it's yeah. neat to think about the way you approach that. Um, I like that creativity. <laughs> It would be very helpful to see that in the General Assembly. Absolutely. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, no problem. Just a second here. Sorry about that. You there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to mute it for a second. The world calls. Well, speaking of protecting folly, thank goodness y'all were able to protect the beaches during this pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. This, this has been an experience unlike anything else. I've ever seen in my, you know, right. lifetime really, but, um, you know, it was like drinking out of a fire hose, especially at first, the information was changing every day and we were trying to work with the governor's office. Um, and, you know, I think we finally have, have reached a point where we do feel like we've got the protection in place that we needed. Uh, we know now for a fact that opening up the beaches is not a good idea. <laughs> so, you know, right. these are things that you know, this is all about the partnership with the state, right? Like we have to work with Charleston County and with the state. And that's exactly the kind of experience that I have. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud now that, you know, I work a lot of hours right now, <laughs> um, you know, to make sure that uh, we're, we're continuing to work with, with our partners. In fact, just yesterday, we were coordinating with, with some partners over at the governor's office. And so this is something that has really been all consuming for us. Um, you know, everything from the small questions of, you know, how do I get my daughter to come bring my prescription to, you know, the bigger picture of, hey, what's this going to look like in three months? You know, where is, where is right. our economy going to be? Where are our short-term rental markets? We're a very tourism-dependent economy. And so these are all things that we have to look at and think about and, and be really serious about. Now, Florida, I know, had, a, had a, a, an outbreak after their beach yeah. fiasco. I don't think we have seen something quite so clearly here, luckily. No, we were very fortunate. So um, after the the attorney general's opinion came out that mm -hmm. uh, that indicated that we were not allowed to do it, you know, we coordinated with some of our beach partners. Um, we have actually all already seen a number of lawsuits come out of this. So we're, we're you know, we're trying to look at all that. Um, but we felt like, okay, let's, you know, let's see, the governor believes that we can do this and we can do it responsibly. Um, and so we gave it a day and tested it out. And it was unfortunately not the case. Um, so we were able to say, you know, hey, this is the evidence. This is, this is the way that we can keep law and order. We have to close the beaches. You know, unfortunately we have to restrict access to the island. And yes, we've been very fortunate. There was only one case on Folly Beach. Um, since then that person has recovered. So we that we know of the known testing, but of course you still have to assume that everyone is infected, that everyone you come into contact with is an asymptomatic carrier. So, you know, we're still working as if it was, as if it was still, you know, hundreds of cases, but, but we have been really fortunate. Yeah. Well, and, and of course you've got a special situation that I'm not sure everybody is aware of. You don't just have two elections this year. You have four, if I'm counting correctly. 
I know, I know. That was, uh, you know, gosh, I don't think anyone, nobody wants a special election. Nobody wants a primary right. for that matter. Um, but yes, so unfortunately, um, you know, we are looking at a special election situation. Um, right now, it's still a very shifting landscape, so we're not totally sure, but it's looking like June 9th is going to be the primary for both the regular election in November and the special election in August. So my understanding is there will be two ballots that you come in and, and complete when you go on June 9th. Um, everyone that we're talking to on the phone has been asking about the vote by mail. I'm really thankful for Charleston County's leadership and the State Election Commission's leadership um, in, in promoting the vote by mail. You know, as you know, not everyone, there are certain reasons to qualify for an absentee ballot, um, but they are fairly broad, right? So if you're over 65, if your employment would prohibit you from voting, if you're a government employee, um, you know, if, if you're gonna- illness or injury prevents you from uh, attending in person. Exactly. So illness, injury. So any of these things, you know, these are fairly broad reasons. Charleston County has made it very clear that they are interested in working with people. They said they'd be prepared to have a mail-in ballot for every Charleston County resident if they wanted it. So we're trying to promote that with everyone that we talk to or through our social media. You can request these ballots online, by email, over the phone. I think they even have an option for fax. So this is certainly something that is going to be important. We want people to stay home and stay safe. We don't know exactly what things are going to look like on June 9th. So don't take any chances. Go ahead and request your absentee ballot now. That way you know for sure for June 9th. You know, we may be in the same situation for the August special election and maybe even for the November regular. So this is something that is going to be, you know, it's, it's like nothing we've seen before. <laughs> Well, here's a tidbit. We'll be rolling out a program next week to help voters submit right. their applications and understand the process. Uh, the Voter Protection Hotline will be open for the state party, and we'll have some ways to help kind of walk people through the steps. Oh, that's So we're determined great. to get it to make sure that people can safely vote on Absolutely. June 9th. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Now, of course, when we first saw this happen, we thought that even if there was a special election, that the General Assembly wouldn't be in session after right. the election date, but with an right. August election date, now it looks like the General Assembly may even go back in the fall, right? Exactly. It looks like they may come and not adjourn until September. So, you know, certainly that brings a new dynamic to the special election. Um, I think the big, the big focus is, of course, you know, representing everybody come November, you know, being sworn in for the next year. But yes, absolutely. So the special election matters too. Um, you know, we are, we are going to be doing, you know, we've been very fortunate to have had a successful fundraising quarter this past fun quarter. And so, you know, we hope to be able to have the opportunity to contact voters by digital, mail, phone, all the, you know, we, we were knocking on doors and printing door knocking cards and now we're doing it all differently. So, you know, we're, we're really going to be making an effort to reach out to voters and make sure that they know about the June 9th. I, you know, honestly, most people that we've talked to so far have said, oh, they're still doing the primary June 9th. It's just the farthest thing from people's minds right now. Um, and so, you know, while it's, you know, unbelievable that we have to think about that, it's more important than ever that we make sure that we have experienced leaders in office that can, you know, guide us through this, these kinds of times. Yeah, I've got to tell you, I'm really concerned that the governor's really been able to act on his own without any coordination with the General Assembly. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think certainly this has been, you know, I think we always know that executive powers are broad um, and, and they become even broader in a time of emergency. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you've got good people in government and good people. You know, it's not just about power and demanding change. It's also about relationships and building consensus. Right. And so, you know, I've been really honored that we've had the opportunity to do as much coordination as we have just a little old Folly Beach. And I do hope that, you know, that's something that, you know, he's, he's got a staff and he, he has a good staff and, you know, certainly continue to talk to those folks and, and trying to say, well, hey, this isn't exactly how I would do it, but if, if we're going to do it that way, can we make it a little bit better in this way, right? So I think that the opportunities are certainly there, but you're right. This is certainly an eye-opening experience for all of us on the extent of executive power. And, and I'm hoping that y'all will be able to get a law passed next year that allows some remote action by the General Assembly. Right. right. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the General Assembly, 
even our city councils have really had to, you know, the published meeting calendar, there's a lot of confusion about whether or not that's still required to happen. So, uh, you know, it's 2020. I know it feels like 1918, but it's 2020. And yes, we've got the technology to do a lot of different things than we were able to do even five, 10 years ago. So I hope you're right. <laughs> well, Spencer, if people want to find out more about your campaign, what's your website? Sure. Well, so we're easy. Um, the Facebook is Spencer Wetmore. The website is spencerwetmore.com. Uh, we've got Twitter and Instagram, for better or for worse. <laughs> um, so, you know, we definitely hope to be reaching out to voters over the next couple of months. And we really appreciate everything that you and the party are doing um, to help all of us through this time as well. Well, we certainly know that, uh, that uh, House 115 is blessed to have three great uh, candidates running, and we want to make sure that y'all can get your message out so people can fairly choose choose a, a strong candidate to lead us forward both in August and November. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Thank you. Well. well, thank you for sharing your time with us today and getting to meet your family. We appreciate that. <laughs> There's something. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it, Colleen. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, having lived through it, having a supportive spouse and supportive kids who are interested in what you're doing is going to be critical for you to be able to do the hard work that's necessary. So, I, no, I totally agree. My my youngest likes it because it's an opportunity to get dressed. We've we've just all been in our pajamas for the past week. <laughs> so she was honestly delighted that mommy was doing her hair. <laughs> well, great. Well, Spencer, thanks for sharing your time, and we'll be keeping an eye on your race. Good luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day.